Hello and welcome everyone. This is our Alternative Protein Careers webinar, as I shared already, um, and this is a call that we host every three months. The purpose of this call is to share career resources um, for folks who are looking to enter or transition into the Alternative Protein field, um, and also provide an opportunity for you to ask questions about what it's like working in the alternative protein field and what resources um, or support you might need as you're navigating this journey. Um, and I'd like to just introduce myself. My name is Asia Shehab and I'm an academic community coordinator at GFI. My background is in biology and prior to joining the GFI team, I was working in clinical nutrition research. So that's kind of the lens that I came at alternative proteins with. Um, and now here at GFI, I primarily focus on supporting students around the world through our university chapter program called the Alt Protein Project. Um, and so I'm happy to share a little bit more about that and how I support students um, later on. And who is this call for? Um, this call is truly for anyone who's wanting to learn more about building a career in the Alt Protein space. Um, whether you are coming from a technical or non-technical background, whether you're a student, entry level, professional with years and years or decades of experience, um, you are welcome here. And I will do my best to keep um, all of your backgrounds in mind. Um, this really is more of a overview and meant to be, um, yeah, an overview of the career resources that GFI has and give you some insight into what you can do to really set yourself up for um, success as you're navigating the field. Um, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A or the designated Q&A chat um, so that we can get to some of them at the end of this call. Um, so here is our agenda for today. Um, I'll spend about 25 to 30 minutes um, just giving you a career overview presentation where I'll dive into um, GFI, who we are, what alternative proteins are, um, some of the career paths within the space, um, and, and then we'll move into more of a fireside chat and open Q&A with a special guest today who I will formally introduced later on, but for now, um, his name is Josh Feiler. Um, he recently graduated and will be giving uh, more of a, a perspective on getting into the field as somebody earlier on in their career. So I think that'll be really insightful for any students or early career professionals who are um, on the call today. Um, and with that said, I'm very excited to dive more into um, this conversation with you all. And as I mentioned earlier, feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A chat and we'll do our best to get to them at the end of the call. Alrighty, let's get started. So for some of you, this might be your very first time uh, joining one of our webinars. Um, so welcome. We are the Good Food Institute, um, an international nonprofit working to build a sustainable, healthy, and just global food system. Um, I specifically work on the GFI US team, um, but we also have affiliate teams in Brazil, India, Europe, Asia Pacific, and Israel. Um, we're funded by philanthropy and have earned GuideStar's Platinum Seal of Transparency, um, which is an honor obtained by less than 1% of nonprofits. So we're super proud of that. Um, in order to accelerate the transition toward alternative proteins, GFI focuses our work in three main pillars. So we have our science and technology team, which is the team that I work on. Um, where we work to advance foundational open source research in alternative proteins and create a thriving and um, a, a thriving research and training ecosystem around these game changing fields. Um, and then we have our corporate engagement team and their goal is to build relationships um, with the world's largest food manufacturers, meat companies, restaurants, and retailers to really help them capitalize on opportunities in this space. And then we have our policy team, policy team um, and they advocate for fair regulation of alternative proteins um, and lobby for government investment in research. 
And so what motivates our work is the fact that our current system for producing meat, dairy, and eggs is extremely unsustainable and inefficient. Um, this system exacerbates climate change, environmental degra degradation, um, antibiotic resistance, as well as global food insecurity and issues of animal welfare. And despite more and more people learning about this, about all of these issues, we're not yet seeing enough individuals changing the way they eat. Instead, actually, per capita, meat consumption continues to rise globally. So GFI's theory of change is based on the idea that consumers will choose alternative proteins when they are as delicious, affordable, and accessible as conventional animal products. So instead of asking consumers to completely give up the foods they love and want to be eating, we can instead make products that are just as tasty and affordable as conventional meat. And so here are a few different ways um, to produce alternative proteins. We can use plants, uh, we can use fermentation or microbes, or we can cultivate it from animal cells. Plant-based meat is produced directly from plants. These products look, taste, and cook like conventional meat. Um, like animal-based meat, plant-based meat is composed of protein, fat, vitamins, minerals, and water, um, while also providing additional health benefits like complex carbohydrates and fiber. Um, an example of a plant-based product uh, is one that's probably very familiar to you folks, such as the Beyond Meat patty pictured here. Um, and basically, if you see an alternative protein or alternative meat product at your local grocery store right now, chances are it's probably a plant-based product. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the how, the what, and the why of plant-based meat, I highly encourage you to check out the Science of Plant-Based Meat page um, at gfi.org to learn more. Uh, the second pillar of alternative proteins is cultivated meat also known as cultured or cell-based meat, um, it's produced directly from animal cells. In short, you start with a small sample of animal cells, then you place it in a bioreactor, which provides the same conditions you would find inside an animal, such as warmth, water, and basic nutrients. Then you can differentiate these into other types of cells and arrange them in a similar structure as animal tissues. Um, and as a result, you can achieve a product that is genuine animal meat uh, with the same sensory and nutritional profiles. And lastly, we have fermentation. Uh, fermentation is a powerful, flexible process for using microorganisms to produce alternative proteins. Um, fermentation has been used in food production for a millennia. Um, ancient civilizations used microbial cultures to preserve food, um, create alcoholic beverages, um, improve nutritional value and bioavailability of foods, ranging from yogurt to tempeh. Um, and over the past century, the role of fermentation has expanded far beyond its historical use um, to a much broader range of applications. Um, there are many uses of fermentation in the broader alt protein field and can be broken down into three main categories being traditional fermentation, biomass fermentation, and precision fermentation. Um, it is important to note that in the future and even now, we probably um, won't see these three production platforms, so plant-based, cultivated, and fermentation, as their own distinct industry segments, but rather as one large industry where we produce alternative protein products across a wide spectrum. Um, for example, we often think of the Impossible Burger fitting neatly in the plant-based category, but it actually uses fermentation to produce uh, leg hemoglobin, the signature ingredient that gives it that bloody appearance and meaty taste. Um, you might also notice more and more dairy products that are mostly plant-based, but have fermentation-derived milk protein, for example. Um, so with all of that said, when we think about the different careers and relevant backgrounds in the alternative protein space right now, it can be useful to differentiate the three production platforms to get a better understanding of what 
specific skills and experiences are needed to get into the space, at least for now. Um, so if you're looking for roles in science and technology, you might focus on some of these areas. Uh, you might lend your skills to process optimization or end product formulation or play a more upstream role in identifying ingredients or supplying optimal inputs. And all these segments of the value chain are, po are powered by research and development. Um, clearly, we need a lot of technological innovation, but when we zoom out and view the entire alternative protein ecosystem, we see a greater diversity of roles, not limited to just science and engineering. Um, and we really do need investment to fund all of this research. And once we have the end products, we need to establish distribution channels that make these products truly accessible. And across these stages, we're depending on industry enablers, such as the labor force, business services, and compliance. Um, each segment of this value chain employs many different roles requiring varying skill sets. So this is something that's good to keep in mind when you're thinking about your ideal role in this growing industry and where you might fit in along this value chain. Um, so now let's dig into the career fields and relevant backgrounds for alternative proteins. Um, just to preface these next few slides, uh, one of the most common questions uh, we get from students is, what should I study in order to pursue a career in alternative proteins? Um, and unfortunately, our answer is one that people don't always like, but it really depends is the answer, um, since this is an emerging technology field. Um, essentially, we know that means Certain roles are more in demand right now, and we expect others to be more in demand later. So it really does depend on uh, when you're planning to be entering the workforce. Um, so I'll start by saying that these jobs um, exist across many different sectors. So starting from the left, we have academia. So if you're a scientist, academia is probably the most established or familiar pathway for you. Um, research on alternative proteins is well underway at universities around the world, and getting or working towards a PhD would allow you to lead your own research group, for example, um, or teach the next generation of talent. Um, and then we're going over to industry. Um, so the industry is composed of business to consumer or B2C companies and business to business or B2B companies. You'll recognize many B2C companies um, like Beyond Meat, for example, but B2B companies might be less familiar to consumers since they work more behind the scenes. Um, these can include companies that produce ingredients or design processing equipment for the industry. Um, there's also the option to create a startup or work at a startup. Then, the, um, then there are companies that are relatively new, um, but past the startup phase. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, we have established companies that are starting to get into the alternative protein space. Um, these include food companies, even conventional meat companies, um, and companies in biotech, biopharma, and other life sciences. Um, so compared to academia, the industry offers roles for a greater variety of backgrounds and education, especially non-technical positions. Just like any business, um, all protein companies need to fill roles related to finance, human resources, and marketing, for example. Um, the third section or the third sector is government, which can again include research in government labs. Um, you can also direct public funding into alternative protein research as um, program officer, as a program officer for a government research funding agency like the NSF, for example. Um, and if you're interested in uh, policy, you can encourage policymakers to advocate for public funding. Um, or even be a policymaker who champions alternative proteins. 
Um, then on the regulatory side, there's a lot of work to be done to approve cultivated meat for sale in most countries. Um, the last but not least, we have nonprofits like the Good Food Institute, which offer many ways to support the ecosystem at large. Uh, for example, a lot of the work that, um, that we do, that I do, is to support university students and faculty members in academia who are building novel alt-protein courses and degree programs as well as growing general awareness and understanding around alternative proteins on college campuses. Um, there's also a world of nonprofits focused on climate, animal welfare, and other causes that really overlap with the same motivations behind the protein transition. If you've narrowed it down to careers in science, engineer science and engineering, then these are some areas of technical expertise needed by the industry right now. Um, and this is not an exhaustive list, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how these three production platforms differ and how they also overlap in many ways. Um, GFI administered a survey to companies across the alt protein space and out of, uh, out of about 130 companies, um, some of the most in-demand skill sets across all production pl platforms were food science and biotechnology. So just some food for thought um, to leave you with. Um, presently, there is a high demand for the right combination of scientific expertise um, and also entrepreneurial spirit. So this is great news for any scientists interested in innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, but to build the alternative protein ecosystem, additional expertise is needed too. Um, so these are just some of the non-technical roles that exist in our field today. Um, again, not exhaustive at all. Um, for, for instance, many companies will have positions related to business, marketing, sales, HR and finance. Um, many of these roles relate to consumer acceptance, accessibility, awareness building, sustainable development, all very critical issues to solve for the, food, for the future of food. Um, so in this last section, I'll offer various tips and resources for building a career in this field. Um, and just a quick note that I will be sharing these slides with you all, so don't worry about copying down any links to the resources I'll be discussing. Um, I'll make sure to link this in the follow-up email that you will all receive with the um, email that you registered with. Um, so I've referred to alternative proteins as an emerging field or technology, and by that I mean that it draws from multiple parent disciplines to address a really tricky question, um, which is how can we produce meat more sustainably and humanely? Versus when you look at a more established field like tech or computer software engineering, um, building a career can feel a lot more straightforward. There are very clear educational pathways through compu computer science programs and boot camps. There's an abundance of formal structures like professional societies and mentorship programs. Um, in emerging fields, the industry is still evolving and the educational pathways into the field are being built literally as we speak. Um, so this can make it feel very overwhelming to figure out what steps you need to take to set yourself up for entering this space. Fortunately, we can learn a lot from patterns we've seen in other emerging industries. Um, this list of steps for training yourself in, emer in, in an emerging field came from folks in the ecological forecasting space. Um, we won't dive into each one of these steps for the sake of time, but I highly encourage you to go through um, each of these steps on your own time and um, feel free to click on the link um, at the bottom of this uh, of this page um, to bring you to that ecological forecasting um, article going through all of the different steps. Um, but for today's call, I'm going to focus and dig a little deeper into step two, which is to leverage existing resources 
within and outside the emerging discipline being alternative proteins. Um, so lack of training resources can be a huge issue for emerging fields. So that is why GFI has made it our goal to create many of these resources um, and make them open access so everyone can, um, can find them useful. Um, so if you want to understand the field a little bit better and you're really just trying to understand what's going on, um, the student resource guide is kind of your one-stop shop for exploring the alternative protein space. And this is great for any newcomers to the field. Um, another great resource um, or resources, I should say, are our annual state of the industry reports. Um, these cover the commercial landscape, investments, regulatory developments, and scientific progress of the different production platforms. Um, and these are chock full of information um, that is really, really helpful when you're trying to get a lay of the land and understand um, where the alternative protein space is and where it's developing. Um, if you're interested in going deeper into the science of alternative proteins, um, I highly recommend enrolling in our free open access online course called The Protein Transition. Um, this is great if you want a one-on-one -on -one level understanding or even a little bit more than that, um, and it's free. So it's a wonderful resource to make use of, um, especially if you're at a university um, where you don't have access to alternative protein curriculum just yet. This is a great way to uh, boost up your resume and just have a place to learn alongside some others um, about alternative proteins. Um, and then we also have our alternative protein course database. Um, and in this database, you can expect to find courses um, either that are offered online or at institutions around the world in person. Um, so this can give you a good idea of where you might want to study as a student, um, but it's also good to just simply know um, of the types of courses that are being offered um, so that you can understand, oh, okay, what might be a good course to be to be on the lookout for when I'm trying to figure out um, how to boost up my resume and get the skills that I need to enter the field. So I highly recommend taking a look through this course database. Um, GFI.org slash vocation is our hub for everything careers related. Um, we maintain a career portal which lists available positions across the ecosystem. Um, we also have an interview series that provides um, the profiles um, of a variety of pioneering researchers. So it's really helpful to kind of read through their different backgrounds and insights that they shared in those uh, interviews. And for the entrepreneurial spirits out there, um, we have a startup manual, which lays out the key steps for starting an alternative protein company. So feel free to dig into that. Um, we also have a events um, or calendar page on our website, um, gfi.org slash events. And this is where you can find out about webinars such as this one that you all are here um, for today. Um, each month we have a science of alt protein seminar, um, which is geared towards more of a technical audience um, and focuses on cutting edge research developments. Um, we also have a business of alt protein seminar series. Um, and as you can see here, the next one um, is happening next week, Tuesday, March 19th. Um, and in that upcoming seminar, several of GFI's expert mentors from our mentorship program will be sharing their advice and perspectives on effectively scaling up and commercializing alternative protein products. Um, that's just one example of what a business of all protein seminar might be focused on, but um, highly recommend uh, registering for that one if you're interested in learning more of the business side of things. Um, I also want to highlight that uh, we have a, a upcoming webinar focused on trends in cultivated meat scale up and bioprocessing, um, where we'll be discussing results from a comprehensive survey of 30 cultivated meat companies and suppliers, um, and this will be held next Wednesday, uh, March 20th. 
So if either of those events are speaking to you, um, you can register for them um, at gfi.org slash events and also find out if there's any other webinars or upcoming events that you'd want to register for there. Um, so next, I wanted to highlight our alternative protein researcher directory. Um, in this directory, researchers indicate the kinds of collaborations they're open to, whether it be with um, students, labs, or companies. Um, many of these labs are hiring, um, and some folks in the directory list whether they're open to serving as mentors. Um, so if someone sounds interesting to you, you can go ahead and reach out um, to them through their LinkedIn or through the contact info that they provide in their profile in this directory. Um, the next resource I wanted to highlight is our Alternative Protein Solutions Database, and this is full of research ideas and commercial white spaces in the alternative protein field. Um, so browsing through this database can actually be really helpful to contextualize the field and even narrow down the contributions um, that you might want to make, whether you're a researcher um, or entrepreneur who's really trying to um, help the field develop um, and advance as quickly as possible. So this is a great place to understand what are some of the key bottlenecks or issues that need to be solved in order to move this field forward. And I also wanted to highlight um, the program that I work directly on at GFI, which is our Alt Protein Project. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it is our university program. Um, and the focus is uh, to really turn universities into engines for alternative protein education, research, and innovation. Um, we currently have over 50 active chapters of, across the globe, which you might not be able to see exactly all of the logos here on this slide since it's getting a little crowded on this map. Um, but we are accepting applications right now. We accept applications for new alt protein project chapters once a year. Um, and we will be closing the applications on March 29th. So um, if you are a student at a university, whether that's undergraduate uh, or graduate level, um, I encourage you to look a little bit more into the Alt Protein Project. We have a great website where you can learn about the key objectives that we work on. Um, and if any of those things resonate with you, we would love to uh, receive an application from you or feel free to reach out to me. I'll leave my um, email at the end of this um, presentation so that you can contact me. Um, and... I also wanted to highlight another alt protein community um, for everyone else. If you are not a student, but rather you are a entrepreneur, a scientist, um, a subject matter expert in another field, but you really just want to get plugged into an alt protein community, um, the GF Ideas community is a great one for you. Um, it's perfect for networking and connecting with folks. Um, doing work that you might be interested in, and it's a great place to learn from others who are doing the same thing as you, exploring. Um, lastly, since this is a career-focused call, I know that many of you might be uh, actively looking for jobs um, or internships or co-ops right now. And so I just wanted to highlight a few of the non-GFI resources that um, you might want to look into in terms of finding open positions right now. So we have um, 80,000 Hours, which is a London-based uh, nonprofit that, inv that investigates which careers have the largest positive social impact um, and provides career advice based on their findings. Um, so if you filter by factory farming, this will include job, job postings in the alternative protein space. So highly recommend checking that one out. Um, there's also Animal Advocacy Careers, which offers many detailed skills profiles for animal advocacy roles, um, including this one on uh, technical research for um, alternative technical research for animal product alternatives. Um, I can never say that perfectly. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to highlight um, the organization Talist, which works to connect candidates with companies, um, and they focus exclusively in the alt protein space, which is great. 
Um, they have a growing community of job seekers and they offer, I think, monthly virtual events as well as many free resources. Um, and I'm excited to actually speak with our special guest later on today who um, is doing some part-time work for TALIS um, and can share a little bit more about the resources that are available there. And um, so again, another opportunity to uh, enter the alternative protein um, industry is through working for a nonprofit, as I mentioned earlier. And so I just wanted to highlight um, the work that we do at GFI and the ways that you can get involved. Um, GFI.org slash careers is a great place to keep up with our latest postings and view our open positions. Um, we also have a general hiring call. Um, it's called our Career Opportunities Webinar. Um, and that is great for individuals who are interested in open roles with GFI US. Um, we also have um, uh, other websites for our affiliate organizations um, that have their own uh, inter or application process for international applicants, so non-US roles. Um, and the next Career Opportunities webinar is actually happening um, on March 26th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and you can feel free to uh, register for it um, at the link here. Um, so that's it for the presentation portion of this webinar. Um, thank you for listening. I know that was quite a bit of information in a short amount of time. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to, of course, add them to the Q&A. Um, or if it's something that you'd like to follow up with me um, or another team member at GFI more directly um, that's more specific to your case, feel free to email me at asias at gfi.org. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for your attention. And now I would love to give a warm welcome to Josh Feiler. Um, we're so grateful and happy to have you here today to share some of your learned experiences in the alternative protein space and the wisdom that you've gained along your career path so far. Um, and so I just wanted to introduce Josh with a, um, with sharing his bio with you all so you can kind of know what to expect. So uh, Josh recently graduated with a bachelor's degree in finance from Westchester University in Pennsylvania. After excelling in various leadership roles during his undergraduate years, he decided to venture into the alternative protein industry. His journey since graduation has been a blend of freelance and part-time positions in startups focused on alternative proteins, and consumer packaged goods, um, along with deliberate efforts to expand his professional network in these sectors. Um, this path has enabled him to contribute as a speaker at several industry-related conferences and webinars. Um, currently, Josh facilitates Failure on the 15th, which is a webinar series for Glasswall Syndicate, an organization investing in alternative protein ventures, um, and he also works as a business development consultant for Talist, um, aiming to connect all protein companies with global talent. Um, his past experiences include an internship in corporate development, focusing on mergers and acquisitions, and also assisting in launching startups like YoEgg and a CPG company. Um, as he continues to navigate his career, Josh is on the lookout for full-time opportunities that align with his passion for sustainable food solutions and also draw on his unique experiences and growing network in the field. Welcome to the stage, Josh. Um, that was a mouthful. You have done quite a lot in a short period of time, um, and I can't believe you only graduated last year. Um, that's wild to me. Right. Thank you for having me. And first off, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, you'll notice that I'm not the perfect blend of a, a science background. Um, all the science background information went to my father and none of it went to me, unfortunately. So I will be bringing a, a somewhat different perspective on maybe the business side for some of you students who might be maybe in the business realm um, and kind of the more part-time and freelance space and just letting you know we're all in this together. I'm pretty young myself, so it's a, it's a growing field, and I'm excited to see what I can share with you all today. 
Wonderful. All right. I am going to transition us over to some of the questions that I prepared for you today. Sure. Um, so let's see, where shall we start? So I'd love to I'd love to kick us off by learning a bit more about your undergraduate experience at Westchester um, in Pennsylvania, where you graduated um, with a bachelor's of science in finance. Um, in addition to earning your degree, you served in various leadership positions across multiple different student organizations. Um, and I'm curious if you could tell us uh, why you chose to engage so deeply beyond the classroom as a student um, and what you learned from some of these extracurricular experiences. Yeah, sure. Great question. Well, first off, I'll tell everyone, I guess, some of the, the clubs that I decided to lead. So I was a finance major, so I I uh, was the vice president of our university's investment group, which focused on, you know, managing part of the endowment. Also ran a vegan club. It was kind of similar to the old project project, but left, not really. In a way, it was more focused on uh, the social element of veganism. So we do like yoga potlucks and just have a bunch of vegan food and all hang out. Um, and then I also ran Net Impact, which is um, a organization focusing on the intersections of sustainability, business, and social impact. Of course, another mouthful there, Asia. Um, but yeah, what I really wanted to do is when I came to university, I well, first off, I graduated. And actually, uh, as we all know, four years ago, yesterday was the, um, the COVID pandemic. I actually graduated high school during COVID and then I went to community college and then transferred. So very much I was kind of holed away in my house like I am right now. Um, but I really wanted to, when I transferred, really be able to build an environment for myself that I would want to basically be able to go to college and receive because I fear that, you know, no one else would be probably running a vegan club at like a state university, something like that. So I decided, you know, instead of waiting for someone else to build it, why don't I build it up myself? So I decided to build up these different various areas because I wanted to make sure that, you know, there was like a sustainability plant-based presence at uh, Westchester. So I learned that, you know, as part of these experiences, um, you know, it's, it's about building community is one of the big things. And it really taught me that, you know, especially for my case, maybe it's not so much for the STEM degrees, but the studies were not necessarily as important if you're looking to go into something more generalized and broad, such as alt protein. So I feel like doing that extracurricular work really allowed me to learn, you know, leadership skills, um, but also community building and really just how to hopefully be able to, you know, connect um, with people. And really it stems down to ultimately, I just kind of wanted to do good for my local community. Um, but then with these experiences, I was able to honestly kind of learn about alt protein because I had been vegan for about three, four years at that time. Didn't really know much about alt protein, but by just leading like a social vegan club and doing food insecurity work, I learned about alt protein. And, you know, now we're kind of here and we're talking about my alt protein experience. So very happy to have led those leadership things. So just to all of you out there know that you know, your journey might look a little bit sporadic like mine, but it can lead you into the space, which is which is great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think, yeah, community is such a huge part. And um, just by surrounding yourself with some like-minded folks, you can learn so much, um, more than even what you might learn in just a classroom alone. Yeah. Uh, Exactly. Awesome. Um, so amidst many of the other things you're doing, you're also currently serving as president of the Net Impact Philadelphia, which is the local professional professional chapter of Net Impact, um, an international organization dedicated to driving positive social and environmental change through business. Um, and this sentiment aligns a lot with many folks in the alternative protein space. Um, could you share your motivation for choosing to pursue a focused or a sustainability focused career um, and what organizations or connections such as Net Impact helped you to explore your career <clears throat> path within the sustainability space? Yeah, sure. So that kind of ties into what I just mentioned about the extracurriculars. You know, I was a finance major and I thought I would, you know, just become, say, like financial analyst, you know, and work my way up to financial manager, take the the CFA or something like that. But, you know, I, I chose to pursue the more sustainability side of business and a focused career and social impact because I could just really help but shake the feeling that, you know, I need to be either part of or help lead the change, you know, towards a better world. 
Um, and I wanted to be really active in the day to day of building that future that I'd be happy for myself, you know, those around me and future generations. Uh, because up until that point, you know, I had been, you know, plant based vegan trying to do my part, but I realized, you know, I'm really passionate about this space. How can I at large, you know, try to make an influence? And I just felt that, you know, while a traditional finance path might be better paid, you know, I might not have had as much meaning. And then so Net Impact Philadelphia, just very briefly, um, as you kind of said, Asia, it's a professional organization. So there's lots of local ones. Um, there's more than 400 globally. Um, so I just mentioned I ran the undergraduate chapter at my school. And now I have a board of directors of about nine people working under me for this. Um, and really, we're just trying to connect people in the business sustainability and social impact space. Mm -hmm. So much broader than alt protein, alt protein, as you said, Asia, it's a pretty niche space still. Um, but I figured you know, if I can learn how to connect with the broader space, maybe I can help spread our mission in a way and try and get people um, to focus on that. So, you know, although it's not as entirely relevant, you know, we host programs that, you know, pair people with nonprofits um, so they can serve on their board of directors. We host events, you're talking about, say, like B cores and, you know, just social events. So that's fun. Um, but this organization specifically, and in my undergraduate years, um, you know, it made me realize, like I just mentioned, that I wanted to be part of at least, at the very least, sustainability and social impact. And of course, at a more nuanced level, hopefully something in, you know, the vegan or alternative protein space. Um, I once had a guest speaker out, actually. Um, well, first, everyone, Asia was one of my guest speakers. So thank you again. Oh, it was a year and a half ago. So kind of how I learned about GFI. So Asia rocks, talk to her. And, um, but another guest speaker I had, he was like a green career coach. And what he told me was, in Josh, in the future, it's not just going to be the green economy. The economy will have to be green. So, you know, so I felt that trying to build out the alt protein space, you know, and the green economy at large doesn't necessarily have to be viewed as going against the grain. It could kind of be viewed as going with the future in a way, or at least the future that should and kind of has to happen if we want, you know, to meet our, you know, climate requirements and stuff like that. Um, so that this organization really just kind of helped to, you know, push my boundaries and learn a little bit more um, about the space. And I realized that, you know, especially in undergrad leading like the vegan club and net impact um, brought me a lot more satisfaction than, you know, just doing my typical finance classes or, you know, the investment group. And so I felt like this is the space I kind of have to be in. So I would say for all of you, not necessarily to plug net impact or anything, but if you're graduating soon, realize that there are professional organizations out there um, that you can be a part of and, you know, your organization or club journey doesn't have to end in say undergraduate or graduate programs. And there's lots of like-minded individuals. So take a look in your local city to see kind of what um, different groups there are. There might be effective altruism, net impact, you know, you might be able to see if you can honestly collaborate with an alt protein project of some sort. So just keep an eye out and that should help grow your career as well. Definitely. Yeah. The power of collaboration and even just applying what you're learning um, in university towards something that you actually care about can really help you to build those skills that otherwise you wouldn't be able to learn or meet the people that you wouldn't otherwise be um, aligning with. So thank you for speaking to that. Um, the next question I have for you is moving a little bit more into what you're doing right now, which is some of the freelance um, work with alternative protein organizations. Um, and so through your work right now, you often are hosting webinars, um, speaking at conferences and interacting directly with the consumer. Um, in 2023, so just last year, you served as a business development representative at Mission Plant. Um, and I was curious if you could share what skills you developed through this experience um, and what key lessons you learned along the way. Um, it'd be great to learn if and how this experience impacted the decisions you made next in your career. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear. Your yeah, thoughts. for sure. I mean, before I kind of get into that, so for some background, in 2022, I had done an internship in corporate development, mergers and acquisitions, more finance-based uh, it was my senior year, and then I was, you know, applying all these roles. I probably, probably applied to just 100 roles in general. I was, you know, flown out to Chicago, this and that. Wasn't getting anything, but, you know, discouraged with that. And then, you know, in January, I felt, you know what, I really like this alt protein space. I'm going to just go heavily into that and kind of go into the unknown and see what happens. 
Um, so I had a, a colleague and friend now, at least his name is David Benzikin. Some of you might know him. He's a vegan venture capitalist. I got this connection because I was doing food insecurity work in 2021 at my school. And one of the, um, the workers at my school, one of the, the admin went to college with him and they were able to connect to me. And so I had him out as a guest speaker. We had a hundred people come out. Um, so in January of last year, I reached out and honestly just said, Hey man, hope your family's doing well. Uh, cause he had a newborn baby. And I said, you know, just, you know, hope everything's all right. Happy new year. And he said, Hey, you, do you know anyone that's looking for some short-term contract work with an alt protein company? And I'm like me, like, let's, let's do it. <laughs> and, um, so this was helping to launch what's a product called Yo Egg. It's a vegan poached egg. It's getting a lot more popularity now, but back then it was just an Israeli based product trying to break in. Um, so he said, Josh, the job's really simple. And, you know, you have to call like, 300 LA based restaurants and email them as well and get them to try and sample it with the CEO. And so it was only a few months and, you know, it was not, nothing glamorous, but, you know, it helps get into a few places. And then, uh, you know, the company kind of then took it from there and my contract ended. Um, but now they're nationwide in restaurants and they just launched in retail in uh, I think just Los Angeles and San Francisco uh, this month. So, you know, I, what I really learned from that is, um, you know, especially when we think of the alt protein space, we think it's very, sometimes it's like, oh, there's all this bureaucracy and these secretive sales processes and all that. Sometimes it's not very glamorous. Sometimes, you know, it's still a CPG company. And, you know, even some of you, if you're looking for short-term contract work, you could just be like, hey, like, let me try and help you break this product into restaurants or do brand demos, stuff like that. Um, so of course it wasn't actually like applicable to my degree, but it, you know, it gave me an in and, oh, this is not my first gig in say the alt protein space. And then I kind of carried on um, from there. So, you know, it wasn't necessarily like a long-term, very tenuous process, but it just led me to learn that, you know, maybe in this space, especially where I'm at coming from a business background, might have to do a little bit more, um, you know, sporadic gigs in the space, but, you know, it helped me gain some contacts and it's a, it was a cool experience. So I'm glad I was able to do it. Very cool. Yeah. I think that context that you were speaking to of just like understanding, like who are the key players, who are the people within my network that maybe I can lean into a little mm. bit more deeply um, and building those genuine connections can really lead to something like this. Um, where you were just reaching out to say hello and checking in, but it ended up going into something that was a lot deeper um, and helped yeah. you build your resume. So love to hear that. Um, so in addition to being a great communicator and speaker, as you're showcasing right now, um, you're also very pragmatic and understand that it can take time and the right experiences um, to build a career in an innovative field. Um, and that's why it came as no surprise to me when I learned that you are hosting a series of webinars explore, exploring leadership challenges and learnings in the alternative protein industry with Glasswall Syndicate. Um, could you share a bit about what drew you to this position and to, to this organization um, and what you've learned through this experience thus far? Yeah, sure. Um... So with a lot of these alt protein gigs and freelance stuff I've done, I've actually found that people reached out to me and I didn't necessarily reach out to them, but with the knowledge for everyone in the audience that it was the network that I built up. So I was able to get this position. It's not necessarily like paid, but it's, you know, it's, uh, I helped them. They helped me a bit, you know, with networking, stuff like that. So I actually had met uh, Macy Marriott. I knew her via LinkedIn. I'm sure a lot of you are trying to connect in the LinkedIn space and you see a lot of familiar faces. Um, so she's the executive director. I actually met her at the Good Food Conference, which happened last September in San Francisco. And I was able to meet Asia there for the first time in person as well. Um, so we have been connected on LinkedIn and had similar backgrounds. I studied finance, she studied accounting, and we both went to non-target state schools. And a lot of people in the oil protein space, you know, sometimes are coming for more prestige, which is nothing wrong with that. But, you know, our schools didn't necessarily have any knowledge of alt protein at all. 
Um, so I was just chatting with her and it was a good time. Nothing really came of it. Um, but at the good food conference, I ran a, uh, a round table for young professionals in the space, um, just to facilitate it and ask questions kind of like we're doing right now. So nothing crazy. Um, but her and her organization would try and help, you know, startups, investors, stuff like that. They had the idea to host something called failure on the 15th, um, which is like, you know, seeing how these, especially startup founders, you know, might be able to learn from, you know, downturns or stuff like that in this space. So uh, we've had a few different guests on thus far, but they actually talked to partner their partners, which is the Good Food Institute. And they said that my name came up and they thought I'd be a great host. So Macy reached out to me on LinkedIn and asked me to host. I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. And thus far, we've had two guests. The first one, funny enough, was David Benzikin, who was the, the my first guest speaker at my university on Alt Protein. Um, we actually have one tomorrow, so I'll be sure to drop drop a link. It's from the founder of Hooray Foods, which made this like plant based bacon that unfortunately um, had to cease operations this past uh, September. Yeah, what I've learned in this experience thus far is really just um, you need to have the right people in your corner, and you know that might take time. But it all started with that first connection of having that guest speaker out in April 2022 of David Benzikin. We had 100 people come out. And then it led, oh, you know, five, six months later, I had Asia guest speak. And then, you know, I had Dr. Michael Greger, this and that. And then I, you know, was saying, okay, I'll go to these conferences. And then my network just kept expanding. And so thus far, while it hasn't necessarily been like full-time positions, um, I've been fortunate enough to like be able to have some like leftover scholarship money. I was able to pursue these other um, experiences. So I would say, you know, go to those conferences if you can afford them or ask to volunteer network in the space, because especially as young people, you know, the space is sporadic enough, but it's also that niche enough that it kind of feels like almost like a, a bit of like, a, you know, you're either in the club or you're not in it in a way. And so just really be able to tap into those connections. So that's what I would say. And also just that, um, you know, I don't always feel qualified to be leading the call or anything like that, but I'm the one leading it. So sometimes you just have to have almost delusional confidence, I would say, in the space, um, because, you know, as you as young professionals, you want to make an impact. Just emphasize that and people will sense and feel your honesty and your transparency about it. So that's what I would say. So, again, it's a bit of a unique experience, but it's been great thus far. And I'll drop a link soon join tomorrow it's free to the public um to learn about you know failures in the startup space that's so timely yes please do drop the link at the end of this call um and i know we are running a little bit close to the top of the hour um and we did receive some questions here in the chat um there is one last question that i think would be worth asking you josh that we had prepared in regards to um talist so the organization you're currently sure. working with but I did just want to tell everyone in the audience that um, we can save all of your questions and I'm happy to follow up with you um, asynchronously after the fact because you have dropped a lot of great questions that I think would take a little bit more time to actually answer fully. Um, and oftentimes I like to share links. Um, so sometimes it's more helpful to follow up by email anyway. So just so you know, your questions um, are being saved and will be answered. Um, they just might be coming through an email after the fact. And I'm so happy to help you with that, Asia, if any, or directly uh, at me or directed at me. I can. Yeah, I think we do have one directed at you. So that one might actually be great to answer um, right after this, uh, this final question sure. about Talist. So um, you recently joined the team at Talist, which is, again, a company focused on matching top talent with alternative protein companies around the world. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about what Talis does and the projects or resources that you're working on there as a business development consultant? And I know you um, only joined the team pretty recently, so feel free to give us uh, more of a high level or as much as you can. Yeah, sure. And I'll try and keep it concise so we can try and answer maybe one or two of these Q&A questions. Um, so yeah, so I just joined Talos, which Asia had presented very briefly in terms of, uh, you know, how you can learn more about the old protein space and jobs. So Talos, not sure if you're going to ask me what Talos means. It's just a name they made up. They're a Berlin-based company, so out of Germany. Um, and they're trying to be a force for good by building up the alt protein industry. So the main ways they do this, um, they have a big job board. So they run what's called altprotein.jobs. It's exactly that you would type in your browser. So it's the lar world's largest alt protein job uh, database. And they use like AI matchmaking. So um, 
you know, our clients or our people who we have will be able to, you know, they get access to see certain candidates. Um, so that's, you know, one way that you can, you know, get exposure um, to the industry. So one, first off, they have job board, great resources, you know, they have a bit of everything and it's a global job board. So it's not, you know, confined to the United States or Canada, something like that. Um, they offer a bunch of resources. So sometimes, you know, GFI does this as well, I believe, but uh, day in the life of series. Um, so we had one in January. We had a bit of a medical issue um, with some of our team members in February, but we should be starting that up again soon. Uh, they also just launched an alt protein master class. So that's like six weeks and a good networking opportunity and just learn about the space. Other career resources such as, you know, podcasts, we have impact calculators to see like, oh, here's how many chickens you would say by working in this job um, blog and article posts to talk about more specifics in the industry um, and we also you know have a few more resources on our website and then also we go to you know conferences uh, for speaking opportunities so like just last month they sent me out to uh, mexico city to speak at an effective altruism conference i give an hour-long talk on the Yelp protein industry and use a lot of resources from gfi to talk about investment this and that, um, specifically the work that I do. I know I'm rushing this a bit. Um, just joined as more of a business development guy. Um, so really it's about, you know, getting some of the candidates and some of the, um, you know, the employers on board and just building out that ecosystem. So if you're interested in learning more, of course, reach out to me. We do not do one-on-one -on -one, like uh, recruitment services. It's all through our, you know, our software. Um, so, but all the information I dropped a link in the chat below. So, Definitely look into that, um, especially if you're looking for, you know, it's much easier to use our job resources rather than just try and say, like, go on LinkedIn or Indeed, because you're going to be flooded with lots of different things and you might not be sure where to look. So check out Talos at the very least. Um, you know, I would say, of course, from my own end, networking is the biggest thing you can do, but check out Talos as well. So I know we got a few minutes here. Um, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and I can ask answer more questions about that specifically if you need. Wonderful. Thank you for giving us a good overview. But yeah, sure. just want to emphasize, check out Talist. Um, I love that they're global resources. So it's not just focused to one specific region or area because that's often uh, tough to, to serve everyone in the community. Mm -hmm. But while you're here, Josh, um, we did have one question come in from me here. Um, apologies if I mispronounced your name. Um, but the question for Josh is, I'm interested in short-term contracting work in alt protein. Um, are there more are there more established resources to find similar opportunities, or is networking the main way to do that? Yeah, sure. So of course we'll keep it brief. Um, easiest answer is gonna be networking, I would say. Um, you know, I wish there was stuff online that could just be like you know, there's a few resources, say, either like whether it's vegan jobs or something like that, you might find a few contract gigs for just specifically vegan or animal advocacy. You know, if we have a few on Talist, um, but most of the time these companies are somewhat still in the startup space and they don't have enough money to necessarily do, um, you know, full time work, even like with Talist, I'm just part time freelance. So definitely say build out your network, but also if you have the time. You could find places you might be interested in. It doesn't hurt. Send them a very brief, concise email and say like, hey, listen, I'm a student and I'm looking to, uh, you know, do some brief contract work. Could I either do trial work for you or, you know, I do freelance rate at, I don't know, 15 or 20 US dollars or something. Um, I'd happy to have a chat to see if I can help in any way. It's not going to hurt. Um, but yeah, I mean, the best way is, of course, look for developed things that are out there already. Um, but if you have a specific skill set you think you could bring, say, coding or something, and some startup needs coding experience, um, but just on a freelance basis, just reach out and say, have a passion for alt protein, and I know how to code. How can you use me? Um, so, But I would still say networking is the best thing. So hopefully that answers. Feel free to reach out, and we can discuss a bit more. I know we got a minute or two left here. Um, anything else you would like to add, Asia, or would you like to wrap up? I think just for the sake of time, um, we do have all of these other questions saved and I looked through them and I think we can we can tackle them offline. Sure. Um, but just wanted to say thank you, Josh, for spending this morning, day, wherever you are um, with us and really just giving us a very um, like very good perspective on what it's like to be a some be somebody who's really getting getting your footing in this industry and the power of networking, which you've built such an incredible network um, and showing us exactly how that has 
really led you to so many successes in your career so far. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your insights and thank you everyone in the audience for joining us and staying on um, and excited to follow you up with a email where I'll link the slides and the recording um, and also we'll follow up with some of these questions after the fact. Um, hope you have a good rest of your day wherever you are and thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thank you all. Hope you have a great day. All right. Take care.